Hey everybody, this is Brian Scott from the Union Underground, and you're listening to Brutally Delicious Podcast. Thank you for joining me anyway. Um, okay. Let's... Uh, Let's just jump right in because uh, this, I think this whole thing is pretty interesting. The, the Union Underground teaming up with Soil, and you've got back to the 2000s tour. How did that come about? Well, Tim and I have uh, been discussing, you know, Soil and Union Underground doing some kind of, you know, something together for, you know, probably two or three years now. And we're just trying to get to a place where everyone, you know, everyone's schedules were working out and it just kind of worked out with everyone involved. And Tim pitched me that idea about the back to the 2000, kind of making it a themed thing like that. And I thought that was pretty cool. So, um, we, uh, you know, started putting it together uh, probably in July. And I mean, it, it came together really fast because, you know, we'd been wanting to do it for a while. So once we kind of, pitched the idea to, you know, the rest of the camps. So everyone was really excited about it. So it came together pretty fast. I think that nostalgia thing is pretty cool though. And it's pretty relevant, right? Cause we just had that. Was that when we were young festival out at out West? Oh yeah. 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 All sort of very similar, right? I mean, it's, everyone's got that nostalgia for the mm -hmm. time they grew up with the albums that they grew up with. And I think this might be a really cool, cool thing. Yeah, and you know, it's also a chance for people that did grow up on our records, uh, you know, at least our first records for all the bands involved. That um, you know, they're bringing out younger brothers and sisters, or even their kids, and yeah. so you know, kind of reintroducing the world to um, you know those records from back when you know they weren't even alive yet. We talk about this a lot on the show. There's a lot of, because I go to a lot of shows as well. I'm going to talk to a lot of musicians. There's a lot of um, multi-generational shows these days, because just like you said, we've got, you know, myself bringing my kids and I don't have any grandkids yet, but lots of people bringing their grandkids as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I saw the guys in, uh, in, in Disturbed talking about that the other day. They're, oh, they're, really? <laughs> that they literally have, you know, uh, grandparents down to you know three and four year olds with headphones on their shoulders coming to the shows so yeah it's awesome it is pretty cool and i don't know that you see that in many genres of many other genres of music i think it's very much tuned into like hard rock and heavy metal and stuff yeah you know what i, I hadn't even um noticed that i that that is true you know when i think about it i mean that is typically where you see um, kind of that dynamic in an audience shot, you know, it's from right. rock shows. Passing down the, uh, you know, the vinyl to from dad to junior or whatever. And, you know, there's that sort of obsession and connection to the music that I don't think you find in a lot of other places as well. So. Yeah, absolutely. So you're going to be doing the education and rebellion. Is that what I read? Yep, we're gonna do. We're gonna play that record, you know, uh, front to back, and then uh, also a union song called "Across the Nation," and I'll, and we're gonna throw in a couple of songs that people have not heard yet, so which will be a nice treat, and they'll most likely be on the new record. Okay, how do you prepare for a tour like this? Because in the end, none of us are really young anymore, right? I mean, we're all. <laughs> aging, as we, aging as we go i mean i'm not trying to insult you at all but it's different right preparing for a tour well yeah and you know what's different about it is that you have to prepare for it <laughs> right? Right, right. you can't just jump on the bus and go yeah you know when, when you're when you're 27 it's like uh just show me where to, just tell me when and where to go I'm, i'll be there tomorrow you know right. now it's like yeah you know that it's um uh, you know, it's obviously a lot more physically grueling than, than it would have been then, you know? I, and, uh, so I, but you know, in general, I'm, I eat pretty well, I exercise a lot, so it's not gonna, it's not a huge transition 
touring for me. So sometimes uh, the, what I worry about the most uh, as a singer is getting sick on the road, you know? Right. So that, that's always a big struggle, you know, regardless of your age, but um, you know, it's uh, when you do get sick, you know, the older you get, when you do get sick, the right. downtime is that the yeah, recovery the recovery is a lot longer than you used to be. Right. And, you know, when you're on the road and you get sick, you cancel shows When you cancel shows, no one's working. So that you have to avoid at all costs, you know, especially these days, right? Cause the touring industry sucks. And it's pretty and grueling, man. I mean, just putting this together, but yeah, you have to, you have to be, uh, very in love with what you're doing because you know you're going to spend money doing it before you're making money you know right. or or even just breaking even at, it's you know at some point so right. but i think and you can correct me if i'm wrong but most people i talk to and myself as well this kind of gets into your bones early in your life right so i mean i remember like the first record i bought and hard rock heavy metal was just cemented on my you know, in my DNA and it's all you can do. Right. I mean, that's what you're going to mm-hmm. go do. Yeah. I and mean, no question. I mean, there's no, I, there's just no choice. What else is, <laughs> what else is there? What, what else am I going to do? This is my gig, man. You know? Right. And it's not like, uh, you know, you have exactly what you said. This, it's not, you had a choice. It's, it's just part of imprinted into you and that's what you're going to do. So. Yeah. What once else? I, once I, once I opened up that, like the back of, and I, and I was, I had stuff earlier than this, but I just remember, I just remember when I first took out, um, back in black and put that on and just looking at the, I love the black and white kind of grainy photos and just, mm-hmm. just that memory. I just, just from that moment, you know, and there, and there were several things kind of like, like right in that early eighties, like 83, 84, 85. Um, so was that like the, for lack of a better word, the gateway record? Kind of. I mean, there was a few of them right at that time. I mean, I, I started playing guitar when I was 12, 13. So, you know, right then there was a lot of just great records coming out. I mean, right. you know, Screaming for Vengeance, Van Halen 1. You know, um, I, I loved... Um, like high and dry from Def Leppard is a big one for me too. Um, I clearly remember, and it's weird how it's, it stays imprinted in your head, but I remember like being in junior or high school, I guess, ninth grade, little record store across the street from the school and, you know, took my paper out money, walked into the store and Die of a Madman was on the wall. Never heard of mm-hmm. Ozzy, knew nothing about it, just fell in love with the cover. Like you just said about the ACDC one and took it home and the first three notes of Over the Mountain. Mm-hmm. Life chasing the dragon for life. <clears throat> oh yeah, and uh, yeah, that cover that cover grabbed me too as a kid. I remember for sure. I was a huge Ozzy fan because you know I, I was uh, played guitar you know for years before I even started singing or writing songs, and I was just a huge Randy Rhodes fan. So anything Ozzy see? was, I never got to see Ozzy with Randy. No, I remember having tickets. We spent all our money again, paper out stuff to the. Uh that show at the Nassau Coliseum in New York. And I think like a week or two, week or two prior, you know, we had the accident and then it got postponed yeah. for We saw Brad Gillis, which is fine, but it's not really. Sure. Yeah. So anyway, um, are you guys working on new material as well? Did this open up the, the floodgates to start collaborating and making more music? Kind of, kind of. I mean, it works the other way around really. I mean, we've been working on some, some stuff and, you know, we, we did a, uh, we did, we've done a few shows over the last few years, just little one-offs here and there, festivals around mm-hmm. Texas here. And, uh, we did Blue Ridge Rock Fest last year oh, or, yeah. you know, you know, 2022. You didn't do last so, year, right? And the, the, the mess up. The debacle of last year. No, I'm like, I'm so glad we didn't, you know, yeah. God, that was just a mess. Yep. Um, so yeah, we had, we had been, we had been, um, working on new stuff prior to this tour, but it, it was a good opportunity to kind of, you know, get out of that studio and kind of writing thing, 
uh, and you know play some of these songs live and um, you know get some feedback. Are you guys all in the same area of Texas so you can get together and jam or bang it out in the rehearsal room, or is it more just sending stuff back and forth? Hey, this is Scott from Fly on the Call. Each week I speak to a different musician, whether they're in an established band like Silverstein or The Wonder Years, or a band on the rise like Spanish Love Songs, Origami Angel, or Meet Me at the Altar. We discuss music and lyrics, the successes and challenges of being in a band, and more, as we get to the core of each artist. The show features musicians of diverse genres and backgrounds, so there's always a chance I'll be talking to your new favorite band. Listen and subscribe at SoundTalentMedia.com. Yeah, it's it's more just sending stuff back and forth. I mean, me, uh, my guitar player, and I are the you know the the main guys as far as putting songs together. So, right. and we do live in the same city, so that so that's nice. But you know, the other guys, the other guys that are on this run with us, um, you know, everyone's from different states. So, right? Yeah, it, and yeah, so you know, sometimes it's. It's a bit of a struggle, like not having everyone in the same room when you, you know, anytime you can. Oh, sure. Are you, uh, I know this is a pretty short run, right? Like three months, maybe? I, mean, I guess it's not short, but um, what do you know? This, Go ahead. We're, this is only, th- this first leg is only, is only um, just the, the month of March. Oh, okay. I misread it then. So are you planning on doing more of this if things go well, or are you guys taking time to go out on the road yourself, or what's the game plan? <laughs> Yeah, we're going to, so we're trying to put together, you know, a leg two of this lineup and just, we're still working on everyone's availability and trying to figure out if we can do something in the fall, like a leg two of this in the fall. Uh So that's, that's still in the works. And um, as far as us personally, we're going to, you know, do this run um, and then get back uh, to the studio for the summer, for most of the summer. And then oh, nice. release something, you know, later on in the year. And then we are doing a UK run with soil as well in November of this year. Oh, that's really cool. <clears throat> Which is actually, um, I don't know when this is going to be out, but it isn't technically announced yet. But um, I think it's coming in about three or four days. Oh, nice. So as far as you said, new material you guys are working on, is that going to be like, are you going to kind of take on the new business model and do singles and videos and that sort of thing every six weeks? Or are you going to go for the full record or EP kind of thing? Or is it too early? Yeah, it's a little early. We're not really sure. You know, it, it has changed so much. And, you know, I think sometimes the the disadvantage these days of putting out just a full record is that you know, everyone just kind of cherry picks the songs anyway. Yes. And then a, a lot of things get kind of left unheard or you can't, you know, records, vinyl, and the way you used to release things, even, even CDs, really. Um, you put together a record like as a flow, you know, and the songs were meant to be played in the order that they were, you know, put so on the thing was an art or is an art. Yeah, because it's just everyone's like, oh, I, I don't like those three songs. I just want to listen to this one, and that's fine. I mean, you know, for I, for the consumer, I guess it's it's a. Right, they're it's listening plus. to your music, so that's good. But, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's just it's really not the same. You don't get the, you don't get the feel of, like you said, a piece of art. You know, right. and I think that's why everyone is going to singles. And yeah. you know, the thing about it too is sometimes when you have less to choose from, you can focus more on that thing. In other words, if all, if all you, if the only choice you have is to listen to this one song that Union Underground has out until the next one comes out, then that's going to be the focus where, oh, I you know, <clears throat> I get you. And it's a necessity of the, uh, of the beast here for sure. However, like we've been talking about this sort of whole interview, I'm very old school, and I just remember the whole mm-hmm. process of buying that Aussie record and you know listening to it top to bottom, how you sequenced it, how you wanted the ebbs and flows to go, reading the lyrics, where you recorded it, who you thanked, all that stuff was a whole process. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I do really miss that too, and, and I think I think fans these days are really missing out on like one of the coolest parts of of music yeah. are, are those little connections, you know, and yes. I. 
even even if we do release um you know a couple of songs at a time or a single at a time there you know there will be a full release on on vinyl regardless at some point you know yeah yeah that's another one of those things that i guess gets imprinted on you early and especially in this sort of genre and like you can't get rid of it yeah yeah that's gonna run me to the end of my questions uh you have anything i missed that you want to cover no just you know as far as as far as where to find us and that kind of thing if if people aren't familiar with us um the union underground.com is you know the hub for everything union so you can find all our socials and music streaming and all that all that good stuff awesome and then thank you brian for taking the time i've been looking at the routing while we're talking it looks like you're coming i don't know not really close to me here in richmond uh uh, so uh, yeah i'm not familiar with leesburg uh yeah okay well, if you get a wild hair and, and want to yeah, take a road yeah, trip, man, we'll be we'll be glad to have you. We were talking about that earlier about getting older. I don't know if I have it in me to to do a six hour <laughs> day trip, but we'll yeah. see what happens. <laughs> right on. I appreciate you taking the time. Good luck with the tour. Be safe, and we'll talk to you soon, brother. Thanks so much, Bruce. Hey, later. All right, bye. Well, hey, friends, my name is Zach Lupiton. You may know me from the band Dust Bowl Revival, but I also host a music discovery podcast called The Show on the Road. For the last five seasons, I've been able to dive deep and have intimate chats with folks like the Lumineers, Andy DeFranco, Wolfpack, Keb Moe, Lake Street Dive, Bela Fleck, and more. So guess what? After 150 conversations with some of my favorite songwriters from around the world, we are bringing brand new episodes to the Osiris Network. New interviews and intimate acoustic performances will be coming at you this summer. And which episodes are coming next, you ask? I am Zach Goody, the lead singer for the band Smash Mouth. Our band is called Milky Chance. We are based in Berlin. My name is David Shaw. I sing and write songs with my band, The Revivalists. Trust me, these conversations go some wild places. So subscribe to the show on the road on Osiris, and we'll see you soon. Again.